Felice, first, thank you for, for coming back here. Obviously, we could see the emotions. You know, um, we saw you put the gloves down. Unfortunately, we got caught up in an interview, so we didn't get to hear everything that you said out there. But was this a decision that you came here knowing that if it didn't go, if you didn't get a win, were you going to lay down the gloves regardless? Or was it as the fight played out? You made it wasn't so much about the win or the loss. I, you know, I knew, I know, I've known for a while that, like, Maybe my heart wasn't in fighting anymore. Um, I enjoyed the training process. I enjoyed everything about it. I think um, I really want, like, you know, I had the two knee surgeries, and that was not the way I was going to go out in the sport. I wasn't going to let it, an injury hold me back. I wanted to um, prove to myself, nobody else, just myself, that I can overcome two ACL surgeries and get back to being in the best shape of my life and come back and fight at the top level in the UFC. Um, and I did that, but I also knew in the process that, um, that if I didn't feel what I, what I wanted to feel in the cage that I was gonna retire. I don't like the nerves of I don't, you know, it's like a roller coaster ride. You get those nerves and those butterflies and the anxiety, and I just don't like that feeling anymore. And I don't like, you know, my my legs got heavy in there. I like, I just felt heavy, and I just didn't feel like, not that I didn't try to push the pace, you know, but I just didn't have that like extra little oomph to like really like fight out of bad positions. And um, I don't know if it's mental. I don't know if it's physical. I don't know if it's just, you know, I. I've been doing this sport for 20 years, you know, so it, it takes a toll on you mentally and physically. Um, so yeah, part of me did know that I was, it was maybe going to be my last fight. And I, and I said that if, if I felt great in there and I, you know, I had the desire to really push the pace, then I would, you know, continue on in the sport. But I said that if I didn't like have it in me to like, you know, I just felt something in there that I didn't like, you know, I was I went after it, and, and I actually loved getting hit. Like, that wasn't like, I was like, yeah, like, it felt kind of good, which, I mean, it's weird, but I just didn't, like, I just wanted the fight to be over. And I'm not saying I gave up. I just I just realized, like, this isn't, you know, for me anymore. When did that, 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 that I guess that feeling where you were feeling like, I'm not having fun in here, I want this fight to be over, was that, like, third round, second round, or was there just a place where you're like, this just doesn't feel like it used to. Did that, did that come on quick in the fight, or is it as the fight maybe went on? It was even in the locker room. I just felt like my, my legs were heavy. You know, I get these, like, nerves in the pit of my stomach, and, like, sometimes they go away as soon as I get in the ring, and, like, like sometimes they don't, you know, and I just, I just felt, like, and not nervous about the fight. It wasn't even about the fight. It was just about, like competing I guess or like not wanting to like have that feeling anymore to where it's like I don't feel this way in the gym like in the gym I feel like super strong and I feel great and you know even like I I don't know if it's like the the recovery from the weight cut you know you're like forcing all this food that you don't normally eat and you're like you have to like get your body you know you have to lose all this weight and then like I don't know if you like the weight cut does something to me to where I just don't feel good anymore and it's not like I have terrible weight cuts it's just that you know you put your body through so much and you know you're training so hard every day and you're you know I, I eat clean like I eat so where I, I feel good so I have good energy and then it's like I, I have great energy in the gym and I can push it and I can push the pace and you know I, I but then it's just like I felt like in the cage I couldn't really push the pace and it's like why am I going to train so hard for three months to not feel as good in the cage as I do in training? It just, cause that's, that's what you're fighting for. Well, I know that I even talk with other media members, you know, you always come into a fight week in shape and I thought you looked absolutely, your physique was so super ripped when you were up on there. So you could definitely tell that you did the fitness, that you did all the work. Was there any point in when you were pushing yourself, when you were training as hard, did any of the, the, the thoughts of that, this might be the last one, did it ever pull back from any of the training? Or was it always, you love training so much that nothing was going to stop you from training as hard as possible? Yeah, well, there was a point in time, um, I, I think recovering from the knee surgeries was really hard on me. Like, 
physically and mentally, you know, because it took a long time to, to get back. And, you know, I was um, every day, like I would train really hard and then I would like get really, really sick. And my body was like aching and sore. And, you know, I had to see a doctor to get, you know, like blood, you know, I got blood work done. I got blood, urine, saliva. I got a hormone panel, you know, I got everything done. And then, you know, I had, you know, a lot of deficiencies and whatnot, probably too from, you know, my knee, my first knee surgery, my, my first surgeon did an incomplete surgery and I didn't know it. So I was in pain all the time. So I was like taking all this, you know, like all these pain pills every single day just to get through training. And I don't know if it like messed up my gut. I don't know if it messed up my hormones, you know, like I had all these deficiencies. So once I like found out all like the deficiencies and worked with my, you know, doctor to like get everything back up. And once my body started feeling good, I was like, okay, I, I, I got this, like, I, I can feel good again. And, you know, I loved training and I actually felt so good and amazing that I thought that's how I was gonna feel in the cage. Like, I thought I was gonna, I really believed in myself. I really thought I was gonna do amazing, you know? And then, I don't know, like in the, in the ring and like in the locker room, the nerves just like didn't go away. And then I got in the cage and I just didn't feel amazing, you know? And it sucks too because I do train very hard. Like my, like my physicality, like my body isn't like. I don't train to look like this. I just train really hard to like, perform well. And it's like, what's the point if I can't perform well? Then I might as well just go to the gym and do what I love. Go to my, you know, kickboxing classes and do my yoga and do my strength training and like, just train for me. You know, I. I don't like I don't know I just it's, it's really it's just really sad for me because I think too as a fighter who's been doing it for so long you feel like what am I gonna do when I'm not fighting you know and I know there's so many other things that I can do I know that I'm more than just a fighter and I actually like mentally got to a place before the fight like knowing that I might retire and knowing that for the first time in my life, I really believe that I have so much more to offer the world than just like Fleece Herrick the fighter. But it's still hard to, to leave, you know, the sport behind. And I do, you know, and it's not even like, like I would still do boxing, you know, I love boxing and I don't think that my legs would feel as tired in that. That's what I started off doing was kickboxing and boxing and like that's actually like what I really love to do. Um, I'm not saying I don't love MMA. I just feel like there's so many elements to LMA that almost like give me anxiety. You know, like, well, what if she does this? And what if she does this? And I don't know, should I be focusing more on grappling? Should I be focusing more on striking? Should, you know, everybody's constantly evol evolving that it's almost like I go into camps like almost like so overwhelmed, like what do I focus on, you know? Well, I guess that's good to hear. So I guess that leaves the door open for combat sports, and I guess still there, maybe just not MMA, but boxing. You could see yourself maybe going into boxing? Well, boxing is my first love, and I knew, like, even, like, I talk to my boxing coach all the time about it. I'm like, you know I love boxing, and you know I love training with you. Like, I love training with my boxing coach, and I'm actually, like, when I just can hone in on boxing, like, I feel like that's what I love, like, that's what I'm the best at. That's like what I want to do the most, you know? And I'm not saying like, even like MMA. So I started MMA because I, I was in the sport, you know, I was on a reality show called Fight Girls in 2007. And, you know, I was on there with Gina Carano and, you know, Brandon Vera's wife was on it. And then, you know, I got to meet Randy Couture through Gina. And like, I just realized that everything was going towards MMA. And that's why I got into MMA. And I don't know if I ever really loved it. And I know that's, that's really sad to say, and it, it seems like I'm like a, like a traitor or a fake or whatever, like, oh, you don't love MMA, you've been doing it so long, you know. Or, you know, I know people are gonna talk shit about me, like, oh, uh, no wonder you lost, your heart's not, like, whatever, people are gonna say whatever they want. But, like, I never loved MMA. I love it in training, you know, but, like, I really love boxing. Like, that has always been my first love. So maybe, you know, everything's, just gonna come full circle I don't know and maybe it's too soon to ask this sort of question or maybe it's something that you think about later on but when you made the decision that you were willing to walk away when you think about your career as a whole are you pleased with how your MMA career went or do you have any regrets or of anything or 
when you look back on this career that you, that you built, I mean, I consider you one of the pioneers in, in what women were able to accomplish to this date. So, I mean, I guess, are you, are you any regrets or, or are you proud of what you were able to accomplish? Um, I'm proud and I'm not proud. I feel like my anxiety for so long got in like, my like anxiety about like the scale, like I, I had a lot of eating disorders, which probably helped me like not perform so well. I had a lot of like anxiety about, you know, just anxiety about the sport, like, you know, the media and, you know, oh, I can't say this in, in my interview because then, then they'll take it like this. And like, almost like, or <laughs> I feel like I could have done more. I really do believe I could have done more. And I know I did a lot. But I think that's what's so hard is, like, I'm leaving the sport, like, a very physical, physically capable human being. I'm not, like, a lot of people where it's like, oh, it's time to hang up the gloves because I'm just, like, this sloppy, like, girl who's, like, oh, it's like, she's, her body's gone to shit. Like, everything's gone to shit. Like, I'm, I physically feel great. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's just, like, the sport's just worn on me. Um... But I guess to answer your question, um, I don't. I think that's my my biggest problem with myself is, no matter what I do, no matter how much I accomplish, nothing's ever good enough for me. So um, I I don't know. I might I might have regrets later on, like oh you could have done more. Why did you leave the sport? But at the same time, like if you're not doing what you love anymore, then there's no point in staying. Well, that, I guess that kind of touches on my last final question. You know, a lot of times in MMA retirement, sometimes don't stick. You know, sometimes <laughs> things are said in the heat of the moment, and then, we, you know, six months later, we see somebody have a change of heart. Where you're currently at in your head now, this decision will stick, or do you leave the door open at, at some future later, later date? Um, you know, I really don't like when people make a decision to retire and then they're like, oh, surprise, I'm back, I'm here, I'm out of retirement. Uh, I feel like it will stick. I'll still train, I still love training. Um, I just feel like I don't wanna mentally like do this to myself anymore. I feel like maybe it's more mental than physical, you know, that I just, I just don't, I love the process of training. I feel like that's what I love to do. But competing just now just makes me feel like that. <laughs> well, thank you for all the years of fights. I appreciate everything that you've done. Thank you. Hey, Felice. <clears throat> Over. <laughs> oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I um, just want to say thank you for a, a fantastic career. You are one of the OGs in the sport. Um, I just wanted to know uh, what was your favorite fight of your career? Alexa Grasso. Um, do you want me to elaborate or just? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so when I fought Alexa Grasso, um, I was like three to one underdog. Like, no, uh, Grasso's up and comer. And she's a great fighter. She is a badass. Uh, but, you know, everybody underestimated me. I was, it kind of was, you know, they were always talking about how great her striking was and hopefully oh, couldn't strike with her. And I'm like, do you not even know that I have like, 30 something kickboxing fights. I feel like people like they want to look at all these up and comers like they're like th like a god and they kind of like dismiss like people who actually have, you know, been in the sport in a long time and accomplished a lot cuz it's all about like, oh, what are you doing now? And you can forget about, you know, everything else. Um but for that fight, I felt so dialed in. Like it wasn't like just in camp. Like in the locker room, I remember being like the calmest I've ever been like I just felt like ready to go like I wanted to compete um, and so that was my favorite fight <laughs> awesome and then um, you know on your way out there's all these little girls that are now you know coming up and fighting and want to be fighters and they're gonna look at you as you know someone to idolize what is your message to little girls that are getting into the sport um, I would say to not look at you know the outcome and the fame and I would just say to train hard like I always say like I to train hard like always like do what you love do it because you love it not because like your parents are pushing you to do it not because you see like these celebrities or you know these other famous fighters and you're like oh I want to be like that but it's like do you really want to like put in all the work like you have to like it's not easy like people always see the finished picture but there's 
so much more to the fight game than just like, oh, look at her, she's on TV. It's, it's a lot of work and you have to be prepared to do the work and not expect that it's just gonna come to you like, oh, well, I'm, I'm in the gym, like I should be in the UFC. You know, you gotta put the work in. <laughs> thank you again for a fantastic career. Thank you. Just wanna say thank you, Felice, for the memories, for helping elevate the game to the next. Tough 20, being your uh, honest, upfront, vulnerable, even tonight. <laughs> that's how you super felt. So on behalf of everybody on social media, thank you and best of luck on the next chapter of your career. You're welcome. Thank you.